What is up my dashing dudes? I am the Hans TV. Retail brings out the worst in people. And today we find out what happens whenever they go to their boiling point. It's r slash Tales from Retail. Our first post for the day comes from Mike Kern. Angry old man versus corporate policy. We've all had those customers that start getting really pissed over basic rules that come from way up the corporate chain. And last week, we had a doozy. I work in the tire center of a large warehouse retailer, so we don't get fancy. We have to follow lots of rules, and there's very little wriggle room there. One of the big rules we are strictly required to follow is regarding purchases of only two tires. For safety's sake, we always have to install new tires to the rear of the vehicle if only two are purchased. We will rotate the existing rear tires to the front for free as part of that. This is to help avoid a spin out in the event of traction loss. A lot of old school people hate this rule. It used to be accepted wisdom that new tires were better on the front, especially with a front wheel drive vehicle. Many older people want their new tires on the front to even out the wear. Regardless, we won't do it. Cue angry old man walking in. He ordered two tires a few days prior and was bringing in his vehicle to have them installed. We go through our usual sign in process get to the step where he has to sign the invoice to approve the work, and he loses his mind over seeing that we've signed him up for a rotation in addition to installing two tires. He swears up and down that no one told him, that it's his right to get tires installed however he pleases, that he's a paying customer, blah blah blah, the usual. I supervise at work occasionally, but thankfully that wasn't the day. So while angry old man is yelling at my poor coworker who happened to be signing him in, I run and get the supervisor on duty. The supervisor starts trying to calmly explain that this is corporate policy and for his safety, but he's not having it. He demands to speak to the manager. Of course, unluckily for him, our manager was in that day and he also follows policy. Angry old man is not happy. He wants to talk to my manager's manager. We try to explain that the store manager doesn't know anything about tires and won't overrule corporate policy, but angry old man doesn't care. So, the store manager comes down, talks to the guy to see what's going on, and immediately asks my manager what we're supposed to do. Because as we explain, he runs the store. He doesn't install the tires. This really sets off angry old man. Now he's ranting about how we're all incompetent, and he wants to talk to one of these corporate people that are setting these unreasonable policies. During all of this, I've been busy signing up multiple other customers, doing price quotes, selling car batteries, etc. As my supervisor goes to get our regional manager on the phone, the guy who sets corporate policy, I'm signing up a guy for new tires on his Tesla. Tesla guy has been patiently waiting in line while I tried to deal with everyone ahead of him, and while the rest of my coworkers try to placate the angry old man, Tesla guy finally snaps. He scolds the angry old man for giving us a hard time when we're just doing our jobs, following the rules, and are actually just trying to keep him safe. Angry old man just scoffs and tells Tesla guy to mind his own business and buy his tires. But Tesla guy isn't having it. While I run to get his tires, I can hear Tesla guy laying into angry old man about how he should be ashamed. How everyone could have been done and on their way if he wasn't wasting time, and how incredibly rude he's been. Angry old man is left sputtering, and my supervisor comes back with a regional manager on the phone. Angry old man talks to regional for about 30 seconds before angrily hanging up signing the paper and walking out the door without another word. A little while later, when angry old man picks up his car, I do happen to be the one who gets to deal with him directly. And he snaps at me about how he's going to cut up his membership card, how we've lost a valuable customer and that my store can take policy and shove it up our asses. Tesla guy, you're my hero. Angry old man, I just hope your inevitable heart attack doesn't happen when you're driving. But at least your car will drive straight if it does. I just love it whenever old people do not get with the times. Yes, a lot of cars used to be front wheel drive, but nowadays most cars are rear wheel drive, which is why they put them on the back because of their priority. This next post comes from SFSFSF Giants. I'm going to sue you. I'm a store manager for a tool store. We have a bit of an older customer base and still get quite a few checks written per day. Whatever, it's not fast or efficient, but it's a valid form of payment as long as they have ID and it goes through. Customer brings me up his item, and he starts writing a check, grumbling, This better work. It didn't work the last four times. I input all his info. It needs telecheck authorization. Gets denied. I'm not sure why. It's way above my pay scale. 
I give the customer back his check and ask if he has another form of payment. I knew it. This always happens. I'm going to call my attorney. You'll be hearing from my legal team. Making a scene on his way out. If it's been denied four times, why do you keep coming in with the same checkbook expecting a different result? Maybe have some cash on you. Pushed him over the edge, fully expecting a complaint email tomorrow morning. I mean, just as a general rule of thumb, if your check bounces, it's because you don't have enough money in the account. Old people, get with the times. We have online banking to where you can see your account. Our next post comes from My Name is Anna. Customer complains about me because I wanted to put a sticker on the gift I wrapped for her. This happened yesterday and I still can't get over it. I work in a big bookstore and yesterday morning I was at the register. About an hour after we opened, a woman came to me and paid for her book, all with the smallest coins she could find. Everyone behind her was already annoyed at this point and so was I. She then wanted the book wrapped as a gift. That's a service we do for free. I did my best to wrap it all nicely, but tried to do it quickly, as the other customers were waiting and no other employee is available to take over for me at the register. When I had it wrapped, she suddenly screamed, that's not enough. In my confusion, I stared at her for a moment and she tried to use that moment to snatch the present away from me. I pulled it back and said, wait, it's not ready yet. Let me put our sticker on it first. We have to put the sticker with our logo on it. But she didn't like that. I don't want this. I said I don't want this. Stop. She shouted at me, so I just gave her her dang present without that stupid sticker on it, but didn't say anything. Still, this was not enough for her. She stomped away right to my manager on duty and officially complained about me being rude. My manager is the kind of person who always has the back of a customer. He is not unfair to the staff, but a customer comes first. So he excused on my behalf and gave her a voucher for the cafe attached to the store. He then came to me, told me she just complained about me, and asked about my side of the story. He assured me nothing was wrong, but told me to keep an eye on always being friendly with the customers. To know that this woman got a voucher for complaining about me for doing my job still ruined my day. Most of the time I love my job and the people I meet, but sometimes I just can't stand it. Managers like that are the reason Karen exists. Because they cave to the customer's wants and not their needs. She didn't do this right, blah, blah, blah. Actually, she did her job, and the manager should stick up for his workers and not for the customers. Our final post for the day comes from Frankasonic MHV. First, you hoot at me. Then, you throw beer cans at me? I currently work full-time at a consumer electronics store, and it's about as good as retail can get. Before I worked at store, I had a part-time job at a grocery store. The managers were nasty, my co-workers were pretty bad, but the customers were the worst. I'm talking an unhealthy mix of drunk slash high bums, smoking in the store, and stealing things in plain view of the employees, and spoiled rich kids who threw a fit if you didn't pack their bags just right. One day, while I was working the cart shift, you know, gather carts from the parking lot and bring them back to the corral, I passed by some, obviously, very drunken bums hanging out next to the entrance. As soon as I passed by, a couple of them started hooting at me. I just ignored it and kept doing my job. Every time I got within earshot of the bums, they would start hooting at me. They went on for about two hours before I finally decided enough was enough. I went inside and told my manager about how the bums were hooting at me, and I didn't feel comfortable with them around, especially being as drunk as they were. My manager scolded me for reporting the bums and barked to me to get back to work. On my way back out to collect more carts, I heard the sound of an empty aluminum can hitting the ground. I looked behind me and saw a copyrighted beer can laying on the ground about five feet behind me. I thought nothing of it and kept going. I was too pissed at my manager to pick up the can. About ten awful minutes later, I had just passed by the hooting bums again when it hit me. A beer can, that is. Smack dab in the back of my head. It didn't hurt so much as it startled me. Literally five seconds after the first can hit me, Another one whizzed by my right ear and landed in the gutter. That was the last straw. I did my best to dodge a few more empty beer cans and a partially full one spewing beer as it flew through the air, and I marched right over to those bums. I told them they needed to either stop hooting and throwing beer cans or get off the property. One of the bums started yelling about certain things I'm not going to mention, and the manager finally came outside. But instead of asking the bums to leave, he dragged me inside and gave me a write-up for telling the bums off. Five weeks later, I resigned. 
OP, did you not report this man to his boss? Because he is supposed to protect you. He's not supposed to be, oh, you can't tell the bums off. No, they were a severe threat to your health. Therefore, it is in your right to be able to tell them off. He was a horrible manager. Well, all right, my dashing dudes. That is going to do it for today's episode of r slash Tales from Retail. I hope you like the stories, and if you did, I'll link them down in the description as always. And if you like the video, subscribe, share, drop a like, and a comment down below what you'd like to see me read next. A humongous thank you to everyone who has subscribed in the past few months. I can't tell you how gracious I am that y'all love my channel and y'all love the videos that I put out. With that being said, I'll see you in the next video.